Hello everyone and welcome to Nature Days. I'm Brienne and today we'll be talking about birds. That's a huge topic to cover in just one little video, but there are so many great books, documentaries, and websites out there if you'd like to find out even more. So what is a bird? Some of the things birds all have in common are feathers, beaks, and laying eggs. You might have pictured a bird flying through the sky. Most birds fly, but not all of them. Can you think of any birds that don't fly? Penguins and ostriches might come to mind. There are actually a number of others, including the emu, cassowary, and kakapo, a rare large parrot from New Zealand. Most of the birds you're likely to see around here can fly though. Even wild turkeys, which spend a lot of their time walking on the ground, do have the ability to fly. How do birds fly? The combination of light skeletons, powerful muscles, and feathers is what allows them to take to the skies. But even among all the birds that fly, some have different skills than others. Hummingbirds, for example, can do things that no other birds can. In addition to flying forwards, they can fly backwards, sideways, and straight up. They can also hover for long periods of time and even do somersaults. How can they do all this? Their bodies are extremely light. Hollow bones, more fused bones than most birds to remove the need for some muscles and tissues, and tiny feet lighten their load. Their feet are so minimal that they are able to perch, but they can't even walk like most birds. They also have huge flight muscles in proportion to their size. They can beat their wings 12 to 80 times per second depending on the species. So they need to eat a huge amount of food, flower nectar, to fuel their energetic flight. If you see a hummingbird around here, it's likely to be a ruby-throated hummingbird as they nest in our area, although occasionally other species will pass through. If you want to increase your chances of seeing them though, there are certain flowers you can plant in your yard that are some of their favorite food sources. They especially like red, orange, and pink flowers. Penn State Extension recommends the spotted touch-me-not, trumpet vine, cardinal flower, trumpet honeysuckle, and columbine as just a few of the native flowers that hummingbirds like. There are plenty of other flowers that attract them too. I saw one feeding on my bee balm this morning. You can also hang a hummingbird feeder containing a sugar water solution. But beyond hummingbirds, there are so many other birds you're likely to see in and around your yard or local parks. Some of the most common birds you may see throughout the year include the northern cardinal, American robin, morning dove, blue jay, American crow, song sparrow, American goldfinch, tufted titmouse, downy woodpecker, and red-bellied woodpecker. These can be a great place to start in learning to identify birds. Then you can dig into some of the less common birds, or those that are only here for part of the year. Most birds migrate, spending different times of the year feeding, nesting, or wintering in different locations. Summer is actually one of the more challenging times to see birds. Spring and fall are generally the best times when migrations are happening, bringing more birds through, and also when the trees aren't as fully leaved. In addition to learning birds by their appearance, it can be extremely helpful to learn their calls. Oftentimes you might not be able to spot a bird in the trees, but you can hear it singing. There are plenty of great resources for learning bird calls. You can borrow some CDs from the library, visit websites like Cornell Labs All About Birds, which we mentioned in the Nocturnal Animals video, or use apps like Merlin Bird ID or Song Sleuth. You can also learn about birds while participating in citizen science projects. There are so many different citizen science projects related to birds. We're going to start with hummingbirds at home because it's something all of us can do at this time of year, but I'll be mentioning a few others afterwards. So Hummingbirds at Home is a project of the National Audubon Society. It's designed to help scientists understand how climate change, flowering patterns, and feeding by people are impacting hummingbirds. Many hummingbirds migrate, including those you can see in Pennsylvania, but many flowers are blooming earlier than they used to, and scientists are concerned about whether or not hummingbirds are able to match their travels to when their food is available. If you want to help this research, it's very simple. If you spot a hummingbird, you can report it on the Hummingbirds at Home website or through the mobile app. You can just report random sightings, but you can also make it a little more organized, choosing an area to survey regularly and then submitting that data. 
If you have room to plant some flowers or hang a hummingbird feeder, you can even do this right from home. You can also see the data that others have submitted, learning more about which birds have been sighted in which areas. If you're interested in even more birds, there are so many opportunities to get involved. One of the most well-known is the Audubon Christmas Bird Count. This count started all the way back in the year 1900 and continues on today. The way that it works is that all across the country, and world now, groups of people go out at the same time every year, between December 14th and January 5th, to survey all of the birds they're able to see. This data is extremely helpful to scientists to see how bird populations are changing, both in size and location throughout the years. You can find various local groups running surveys that you can join. The closest one for us is in North Park, run by the Latadami Nature Center. The great thing about this project is that you don't have to be an expert. You're put into groups of people with various levels of knowledge. If you don't know a lot about bird identification, you can still help to spot and count various birds. It can be a great way to learn about birds while helping. I was able to join this past year and it was a really great experience, despite the cold weather. Another great winter activity is Project Feeder Watch, a joint project of the Cornell Lab of Ornithology and Birds Canada. Don't worry about that though, anyone in the United States or Canada can participate. If you have room for a bird feeder and can set aside a little time to watch it weekly, this is something you can do from the comfort and warmth of your own home. There is a small fee connected to this one as participants are sent physical guidebooks, posters, and instructional materials, as well as a digital magazine subscription. But this is another great way to learn some of our common and less common birds while helping scientists keep track of changes in various bird populations. If you're looking for other projects to do in the warmer weather, there are various monitoring projects you can participate in. Latadami Nature Center tracks about 300 bluebird houses across North Park with the help of volunteers. There are also Chimney Swift monitoring programs. The Audubon Society of Western Pennsylvania has installed nearly 150 Chimney Swift towers, which provide a nesting site for the birds. You can find a map of the towers on their website. If you see any Chimney Swifts near the towers, you can report that to the Audubon Society for their records. Latadami Nature Center also has Chimney Swift towers to be monitored in North Park. Also, the Pennsylvania Game Commission is asking citizens to report all wild turkey sightings throughout the month of July to help analyze their population numbers and aid conservation efforts. Finally, if you remember us talking about iNaturalist in the first week, Cornell Lab of Ornithology's eBird is a similar program that allows you to log all of your bird sightings and see which birds have been sighted around you. If you're interested in birds, it's worth downloading the app and exploring your area. And those are just a handful of the citizen science projects involving birds available. Trying to participate in all of them would be pretty overwhelming. But if any of them jumped out to you as something particularly interesting or that you could easily fit into your routine, please do get involved. All of these efforts are designed to help scientists track bird populations so they can figure out how things are changing and how we might best be able to support the birds. All of us can do something to help. Maybe I'll even see you at this winter's Christmas bird count. But regardless of which projects you may get involved with, the next time you see a bird, whether it's singing in a nearby tree or soaring overhead, take a minute to watch it and appreciate our feathered friends. Happy Nature Days!